Hi everyone in Year 7, welcome back, this is the Redbridge Science Channel. Today we are going to be talking about measuring cylinders. My objective today is I want to know which is the most accurate way to measure out exactly 25 centimetres cubed of water. Now today we're only using water and it's cold water. We don't have any glassware apart from one beaker, so normally we would wear goggles, but I'm not going to wear goggles today simply because it's really important that I can see accurately the readings on the measuring cylinders. So, the three measuring cylinders I'm going to use today are this one. This is a 10 centimetre cubed measuring cylinder. It can only hold 10 centimetres cubed, a 100 centimetre cubed, and a 1000 centimetre cubed. And I'd like to know. Which of those is the best to use if I need exactly 25 centimetres cubed of water? Now, there's something you need to know about water. It has a density of one gram for every centimetre cubed. So if I had a one centimetre cubed of water, it would have a mass of one gram. I need 25 centimetres cubed of water. So I will know how accurate I'm being because if I have 25 centimetres cubed of water, it will have a mass of 25 grams. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my 10 centimetre cube measuring cylinder. And I'm going to fill it up to the 10 centimetre cube marker. And whenever we read measuring cylinders, it's very important we put it on a flat surface and keep it steady, and we line our eyes up level with it. Now I'm happy that that is 10 centimetres cubed. But there's something else about when you put liquids into measuring cylinders, and it's this. Now hopefully you'll remember that when we draw measuring cylinders, We draw them like this. And when you put water into a measuring cylinder, it doesn't uh, stay in the cylinder flat. I might exaggerate this a little bit, but it sits in the cylinder like this, with a curve. And the reason is because the water is attracted to the, the plastic, to the side, to the material. So there's a little bit of... Um, static friction going on which just attracts it. So it sticks up around the edges and that means we've got a little dent or a hollow in the centre. Now this curve, this curved line is known as a meniscus. Okay, meniscus. And whenever we read the measuring cylinder what we must try to do is make sure that we line our eyes up with the bottom of the meniscus. So I should be reading that level there, not, not this bit here, not that. I should be reading with the bottom of that meniscus curve. Okay, so I'm happy that that is 10 centimetres cubed. I'm going to put my beaker on the balance. I'm going to zero the balance. So the balance is tricked now into thinking there's nothing on it. And I'm going to pour carefully my 10 centimetres cubed in. Okay, try and get all the drips out. But I need 25, so that means I've got to do it again. So no, happy that's 10. Okay. okay, that's 20 and I need another 5. So I'd like you to be thinking about whether using this measuring cylinder, doing it the way I've got to do it, with 10 centimetres cubed and another 10 and a 5, whether that is a good way or not to get 25 centimetres cubed of water. Okay, I think that's 25. The way to tell will be to look at the balance. So let's have a look. 
24.72. Okay, not bad, not bad. So I've prepared the results table here, and with my 10 centimeter cube measuring cylinder, my first go, I've got 24.72 grams. Okay. Now I'm not going to do it a second time, but normally you would do it a second time, then afterwards you create or calculate, sorry, an average, a mean of these two masses. But I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to switch to the 100 centimetre cube measuring cylinder. And this time I'd like to put in 25 centimetres cubed. So 10, 20, 25. So back to there. Okay. And maybe you can be thinking about whether this is a better way or not as good. So again, I'm trying to get it nice and steady. I'm lining my eyes up level with that meniscus. I've got a definite curve there. I think that's 25. Let's have a look. Ooh. Okay, this time, 25.44 grams. Okay. You might already be able to do a little bit of maths in your head and work out which of those was the better. And finally, I'm going to switch to the 1,000 centimetre cube measuring cylinder. which is this enormous beast. And 25 centimetres cubed is somewhere down here. There's 100. I'm looking for somewhere down here. Okay, I wonder how easy this is gonna be. Let's see. Uh, right. So how good is it when you want 25 centimetres cubed to use a 1,000 cylinder? Hopefully, you're already getting a feeling of how sensible this is. I'm struggling to even get the water into it. Okay. Well, I think that's about 25 centimetres cubed. Let's see. Oh dear, 34.01 miles out. Okay, so we've got three results. Now as I said, we would probably now try those a second time and then calculate the average. But we've got three results there and hopefully it's very clear to you which of those three measuring cylinders is the worst and then you'll need to decide out of these two perhaps which is the best cylinder to use. Now there's one more piece of equipment I'm going to show you. You won't normally use this piece of equipment until you get into year 10 but it's called a 25 centimeter cubed pipette and this is it. Now normally you would use this to um, measure out exactly 25 centimetres cubed of a, of a substance called, or an alkali called sodium hydroxide. But uh, for now we are again, it's going to use water. Now the pipette comes in two parts. This is the glass pipette itself, and this is known as a pipette filler bulb. And it's quite an expensive piece of the kit, so I've got to look after it. But it's deliberately um, produced so that it will measure exactly 25 centimetres cubed. And that is all it's any good for. It's not designed to measure any other amount, just 25. And there is a little marker there, which is probably too small to pick up on the camera, a little marker there, and that is the line 
that I'm going to try to fill the pipette up to. And if I get it right, it should be 25 centimetres cubed. So we'll see. Okay. So what you do is you dip the end of the pipette under the water. We've got three valves on here. We've got A for air, uh, E for empty, and S, in my opinion, is for suck up. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the bowl with the air and I'm going to now suck the water up the pipette. I don't know whether you can see it coming up the pipette. It goes a bit slower through this middle section. To make sure I keep the pipette under the water at all times, otherwise I get air bubbles. I'm going to deliberately go too far, and now, again, trying to keep my eyes level, I'm going to try to empty it down to, pressing the E for empty, down to the line. There we go. I've gone too far. So let's go a little bit higher. And now, let's see how accurate this is. Empty what should be 25 centimetres cubed of water into the beaker. Now, this is obviously quite an expensive piece of equipment. Certainly a lot more expensive than our plastic measuring cylinders. So it should be more accurate. But to a certain extent, that depends on how well I have done the experiment. It depends on how accurate I was when I was doing it. Okay. And if I'm honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with that. But I've got 24.78. I'm a little bit disappointed with that, but hopefully now, when you compare all of those numbers there, you are able to tell me which of these four was the best piece of equipment to use if you would like to get 25 centimetres cubed or 25 grams of water. Okay, that's it everyone, thank you.